Hello, Edwina Murphy-Drumer is my name and I want to warmly welcome you to this interview in the series that is all about unleashing the audacious woman within. Today we have with us Celine Kapila. Now, one of my favourite subjects, as many of you will already know, is talking about energy and how we use our energy, upping our vibration to not only make us happier, but also so much healthier in a way that is a preventative medicine, but also as a way to heal. So Celine has been a nationally and internationally recognized healthcare professional, public speaker and holistic healer whose methods are profoundly effective to help facilitate healing in a new way, or maybe it's actually not so new. Having helped many thousands of people heal using cutting edge technology that is all natural, non-invasive and without medications is exactly why I am so excited to introduce you today. Salone, welcome and thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. I was, you know, before we hit record, I was just looking at this beautiful room that you're in. And I love the fact that this is a workspace. Oh my goodness. I would like to go to a healing center that looked like that. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. We want to make sure people feel the energy of, mm. you know, what they're really coming in for. And um, we have a beautiful uh, courtyard as people come in and they don't expect it. And they just open the door and there's this gorgeous garden. And then they come into all of our uniquely designed rooms. And um, we've, you know, taken the time and energy to make each room really special and to make sure everyone feels the energy here. It's really great. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. So, Celine, for those in our audience that haven't had a chance to meet you yet, could you tell us a little bit about your story and how you come to do the work that you do now? Absolutely. Um, I was influenced with natural healing as a young a girl, about 10 years old. My aunt um, really influenced me. Uh, my head, I had a grandmother who was dying of leukemia at the age of 74. And I also had a cousin of mine who was dying of a thyroid disease. And um, she was very frustrated with um, traditional medicine and she really needed answers. And so she just decided to kind of take things into her own hands. And she used herbs and essential oils uh, to help get both of them better. And my grandmother lived to 93 from 74 when she was dying. And then my cousin got better and he's been healthy ever since. So those were two incidences that I feel that pivoted me into natural healing. Um, I really became really passionate about understanding energy and energy flow. And I just kind of became interested in all of that at such a young age. And I would, as I started to grow older into, you know, my older years, um, I tried to dive into anything and everything I could uh, related to natural health. And that just kind of led me on to where I am today. Yeah. Beautiful. I, um, there, it's always comes with these. I find these, you know, people that work in this field always come with experiences, whether it's their own experiences of trying to find answers. You know, we, we can get into the medical system, the traditional medical system, and it's, it feels so hit and miss. Um, so I love this topic and I'm so excited to dive into it. Yes, Let's you. start you, you know, the work that you do with energy healing is going to be a mystery to lots of the women that are tuning into this. Can we just start at the basics, start at the foundations of what you actually do? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, um, in understanding what we do, we need to kind of remind ourselves that everything is energy. We are energy, um, you know, our desk is energy, our chairs, you know, everything, the curtains, I mean, just everything around us has energy. And that energy actually can be measured. It's measurable. We can even measure energy of thoughts and feelings. And there are, you know, the Heart Math Institute actually even does that. They do studies and, and, and can show and prove that. So I always love to tell a story about um, that, you know, think of, I grew up in Kansas actually. So I always knew yeah, every time we had bad weather that above the clouds, you know, I had flown a few times when I was younger. So I remembered above the clouds was always sunny. Right. And so for me, I kind of used that as a metaphor in life because, um, you can measure energy, um, 
of shame, it vibrates at 30 decibels, you know, for, uh, anger, 40 decibels, you know, uh, there's jealousy, there's, um, you know, all the different uh, lower energies. And those vibrate at very slow um, vibrational uh, rates. But when we think of um, gratitude that vibrates uh, way beyond the cloud level and it's at 750 decibels and then above the cloud level is 500 decibels and some of our beautiful um, um, you, know, ex you know like Gandhi and Mother Teresa you know they vibrated 1000 decibels you know just the, the the light they shine you know and some of this, the wonderful spirits and saints we've had in this earth but when we we got to think about like when we are feeling bad, right? Um, we don't always have keep track of our thoughts, but when we're, when we notice we're not feeling good, most likely we are beneath the cloud la layer in the slower vibration. Mm -hmm. When we can think of, and this is what I would tell people, think of something you're grateful for, maybe three things that you're truly, truly grateful for to the point where you feel it, like you really appreciate it. And then your energy will shoot through the clouds into vibrating at 750. And you then have just changed your energy and then you're vibrating really, really fast. And disease and illness cannot attach itself to when you're vibrating really fast. This is one of the things that has kept me from getting sick all my life you know I've not had a day where I had to take off sick because of the cold or the flu or you know been under the weather because I understand energy now I am human absolutely I have feelings I have times where I might you know feel mad or bad or depressed or jealous or whatever I am a human however recognizing that you are feeling that try to process it as absolute as fast as possible <laughs> And then get on with it, you know, then go back and be how grateful you are and get shift your energy out of there. So because we don't want to live in these lower energies, because then, like I said, disease and illness will attach itself to those. Everything in the non-physical then shows up in the physical. And that's where a lot of times people are like, I have this pain or, you know, and we break it all down and we learn that, ah, there was some traumatic event, some stressful event mm -hmm. that thus caused now your physical body to start to talk to you and say, Hey, something's not right. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've got a girlfriend here who has uh, an aromatherapy company and she loves talking about the vibration of rose. I think it's the highest. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, yeah. it is. Huh? Yeah. yeah it's, it's amazing. Like, I mean, because I was first introduced to natural healing with herbs, yeah. you know, having learned that essential oils, especially if you get them from a very pure source is 50% more potent than herbs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty outstanding. And like, mm -hmm. you know, we know now in today's time, you know, our nutrition quality is not where they used to be. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to drop a few drops of the essential oil of lemon, instead of using lemons, you know, has a 50% greater impact, you know, into, you know, what you are doing it for your health. So yeah. it's, I love it. So the, yes, the essential oils are incredible. Yeah. That's just one of the things that are little accent points to how we go about what we do. Yeah, I've been a big fan of using my husband, South African, and he brought me back these beautiful essential oil perfumes and they're just mm -hmm. to die for it's another way that i use them mm -hmm. um you know there's i feel like um just knowing where i came from with understanding energy and how it affects us when i was doing naturopathy we were you know i was starting alongside people who were doing homeopathy naturopathy appealed to me because i could see the fruits and vegetables and the you know the herbs and the things that we worked with and i struggled with homeopathy because i was like i couldn't kind of get my hands on it and so i i you know if i think like that i know that there were other people or other people listening to this that are still trying to get a, a grapple on how this works how we use energy to heal mm -hmm. so you know when you when you assess somebody or you're working with somebody is there a way to look at the you know the vibration of different organs within the body or how do you break it down yes. how do you do yeah, that absolutely what's well, it's amazing because we can do um you know maybe the uh the way we did you know 
hundreds of years ago where, you know, we didn't have technology, right? Um, you know, and, and we, we can study whether it's American Indians and the tribes and all the very, or wherever it is in the world, we can trace back to where there were healers, even in Egypt and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have, you know, computers and technology mm -hmm. that we have today. So yes, um, you know, we can channel, um, a high energetic vibration through our bodies and you know like reiki is just that where we're channeling and bringing in the highest vibrational energy um and we can without um uh, touching the person we can transfer it to the person so there's various ways of helping someone heal um you know by either touching them or not touching them uh now because of where we're at with technology, we have um, actual, you know, physical equipment that can read energy and also that can give energy off. So one example is we have um, a bioresonance scanner, for example. It's everything we do is all natural, non-invasive and without medications. So instead of going in finding out, you know, having to get radiation to see what's going on with, you know, a certain part of your body or brain, we have a, a, a way for it to read the energetic uh, field of the brain and the body of a person. And we can do this remotely. Like I could do it with you right there, sitting there. Yeah. Um, and when we can understand quantum physics, you know, we don't question, you know, how can we listen to a radio station in Spain and I'm in California or how can, you know, it's like some of this is almost conceptually difficult to grasp, yeah. right? How can a microwave heat up my food? Yeah. Um, you know, all of this is based on energy. So our scanner, um, when it reads, it already has stored in the database um, the energetic frequency of all viruses recorded around the world all uh, toxins, all heavy metals, all bacteria, all fungus, um, all various types of things. Uh, you know, the health of a, a healthy liver vibrates at what, right? So it has all these things. So when it's reading a person, it's comparing it against, you know, all those things and it's matching it with what, you know, is in that person's energy field. And it can tell us, you know, okay, is this something that is new in their energetic field or is this something that they have had in their energetic field for a long period of time? And it can rank it and give us different quantitative numbers to let us know how much it's weakening. And we can see, okay, um, Epstein-Barr is a virus and we can see, okay, this person is being weakened by Epstein-Barr at 58%. So that's significant enough to either, uh, you know, tell the client, okay, would you like to maybe go get tested at your doctor and confirm that, you know, you do have Epstein-Barr virus um, or not. Sometimes, you know, people just, uh, you know, trust what's coming through on the, um, uh, energy reading, and then we can then uh, devise a protocol that again is all natural and non-invasive. And typically, we use um, frequency healing, and that's where we can program a device that sends energetic frequencies to kill the bacteria or the virus or the pathogen or you know the parasite, whatever, without even harming our body which is amazing oh. and we can literally see it in action and we can do like that even remotely we've done uh, we worked on people who are in hospitals or mental uh, wards um, places where we couldn't get access to them and we were able to um, do this energetic healing remotely and see the positive effects even like with people who have um, autism for example where um, they wouldn't be able to even come into our center, even if they wanted to, because they're in a, uh, you know, in a, a place where they're kept safe. They can't, you know, do, you know, harm to themselves. And we able to see and their doctors, et cetera, their therapists are able to see within 20 minutes, wow, this person, you know, engaged or calmed down for the first time that they haven't done in all their life, you know? So we get that um, not only the physical proof, um, but we also have the data yeah. as proof as well. And uh, we can work with people's chromosomes, their genes, 
um, you know, down into the mitochondria, the cells. So um, it's profound. I mean, the things that we've been able to do to help people and, and um, yeah, we just, you know, it's exciting for us to be able to share this information because, you know, there's so much that we you know, definitely we need traditional medicine, yeah. meaning, you know, we, we need people, doctors to help do surgeries. And if we have an infection, we need medication, but we want to let people know that that's not all that's available to yeah. them. Right. Yeah. That's the power of this conversation. Mm-hmm. I'm just so excited listening to you. It is just life-changing, life, potentially life-changing. And the idea that, you know, that we can get this, these kinds of treatments from home we don't even you know like we can do it remotely is just so exciting so we you know we've touched on the physical health but you've you know you also do this with mental um you know so i'm i'm thinking i'm wondering even you know with the fear and the anxiety and and what is so rampant you know depression and things that is going on at the moment it works with that as well yeah absolutely so the core um so after you know i literally tried to um, hone in on every natural modality that existed. Um, I came across um, one of my friends, Muriel Hemingway. She introduced me to brain optimization and I was able to get licensed and trained and certified. And um, that was about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, given her history, her amazing genius family, incredibly gifted family, um, but also had, a history of depression and anxiety and suicide and all that. She had um, uh, introduced me to a new natural way of healing. And um, there's, it's called brain optimization. And we put the sensors on the scalp so that the, um, uh, the sensors can read again, the vibrational frequency of the brain and if it's not in range, you know, again, the brain is meant to be fluctuating, just like blood pressure, it rises and falls, but there's a healthy range where it goes back to. Mm-hmm. Um, so it reads the frequencies into the computer and the computer basically mirrors the brain back to itself. So the brain actually can see itself. Just like the brain heals a cut, the brain can see the imbalances of itself and naturally will bring the brain back into balance. And when the brain is back in balance, the symptoms drop away. People who've had, you know, depression, anxiety, stress, uh, lack of sleep, uh, OCD, ADHD, I mean, all these things that are in lack of focus, or they've had these types of diagnoses, um, the brain can get rid of the symptoms and then the label uh, drops away. I have had so many clients that are like, I had Crohn's or I've had lupus and my doctor undiagnosed me because why the brain became in balance. The symptoms dropped away. Therefore there's no label. So the brain doesn't know labels. (laughs) So yes, um, to your point, uh, this is an incredibly difficult time for a lot of people. Um, it's incredibly stressful. Um, the, our stress levels, our fear, our, um, worry, um, our anxiety, our depression, our, it's all growing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, I'm, this is again, I'm so grateful to you to be able to help us mm-hmm. share the message that people out there can get help uh, safely without even leaving their home. Yeah. You know, we can have a consultation with them right over like a Zoom call like this. Um, we can uh, ship uh, equipment to their homes so they can, um, do these therapies on themselves as well as um, some of the therapies that we can do uh, even remotely. Uh, It's profoundly amazing. And and a lot of people out there need help and they're afraid to go outside. They're afraid to go to a hospital or a clinic. A lot of hospitals or clinics aren't even open in their area. So um, this is um, a a different time Mm -hmm. and it's helped us look at, a whole different way of delivering um, the natural healing services that we do. Yeah. 
it's um, a beautiful a beautiful ray of sunshine a light of possibility i can just imagine um what's going on in the minds of the women watching this because it's just it just opens up a whole new world it's really exciting so you know um you talk about raising vibration and yes you offer things that help that but what are some of the ways that you do this in your everyday life mm. Uh, there's, I think it's in everything you do. I think you yeah. have to look at everything you do, um, and be conscious of it. Yeah. So for example, um, what you eat can change your vibration. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, eating this, does it make you feel good or eating this? Does it make you feel bad? Um, you know what you wear, you know, what you put on, does that make you feel good or does that not make you feel good? Yeah. Uh, you know, the, where we shop, does that store make you feel more energy or do you feel sleepy? You know, the phone conversations that we have and the people that we hang around with, you know, did my energy all of a sudden drop and I feel a little down and depressed or sleepy or do I, do I, did I have a uh, encounter with someone that energized me and made me excited or lifted my energy? So it's watching what might lower your energy vibrations and doing more of what lift your energetic vibrations. There's lots of things that, you know, if we notice that we are in a lower vibration, you know, we can, you know, put on some great music that lifts us up. We can call a friend that makes us laugh. Um, we can go um, on a little hike or meditate. Uh, you know, there's watching an inspiring movie, um, you know, America's Top Talent. I mean, like, there's lots of things we can tap into to, to raise that energetic level. And being in gratitude and reminding yourself, you know, okay, I don't have this, I don't have this, but guess what? Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have food on my table? Do I have, you know, legs to walk with? You know, I, there's so much to be grateful for. And when you really truly feel that in your heart, um, your energetic vibration, like I said, goes to 11, 750 decibels, which is outstanding, you know, it's, and it's awesome for our health. Yeah, and being in nature is one yeah. that I find, you know, I notice so immediately yeah. is that feeling of just like, oh, <laughs> so it's so important and we are very lucky here based on California and I know um, even for a period of time you know the beaches were closed the the hiking trails were closed so um, but yes nature is awesome and um, yeah nothing better than watching the ocean waves or <laughs> yeah. uh, or even you know getting doing things that you have enjoyment with you know it's yeah. you're going on a bike ride or you know yeah. yeah, but we can bring nature into our home as well. I'm, you know, my audience knows that I've always got fresh flowers. It's one of my one of my things that I just brings me so much joy, and it's yeah, raising my vibration. Now it's a different different way of thinking about it as well. Oh, for sure, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> keeping in mind that there, are, you know, so many people that are listening to this are at home. And I just, you know, I would love to maybe if you have um, a morning routine or and some way that we can start our day or think about the things that we're doing throughout every day. Yes, listen to music is fabulous. Finding ways to bring more joy and laughter. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. No, okay. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. But what are some of, you know, are you happy to share with us maybe a morning routine or what are some of the things that you do in your day? Yeah, no, absolutely. I'd be happy to. And the very first thing that I do at, religiously is when I open my eyes uh, or I know I'm about ready to wake up, I take a moment to, whether my eyes are open or closed, I just really take a moment to thank the universe that I have another day. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's so important. I think, you know, thanking for my health, uh, thanking that I have another day to do what I love to do. And that's, you know, helping people heal and, um, and, and have, you know, just take a moment and just be really grateful for, um, yeah. all of that. And then, you know, of course I love to do a little yoga, a little stretching and, um, you know, jump in the shower and then, you know, have some beautiful tea and sit outside or if it's, you know, not appropriate to sit outside, just, you know, you know, be in an environment where I'm, just reflecting on kind of what my plan is for the day, kind of getting my thoughts organized. And, um, you know, I 
typically meditated in the evening and everyone meditates at different times, you know, whatever works for them. And sometimes, you know, a meditation doesn't always have to be, you know, what we think it is. You know, we can sometimes, you know, meditation can be, um, you know, knitting a sweater, (laughs) you know, it's just, you know, just in a beautiful, quiet, joyous place where you know we just can let go of you know our thoughts and our worries and just be truly in the moment and that's um where we are creating you know is when we can live in the moment you know yesterday's gone tomorrow's not guaranteed and living really living is being in the moment and i think that if we can remind ourselves um as we go through our day to enjoy everything you know like when i walk through um you know our healing center i just really take a moment to you know the smell the the smells of the flowers and the greenness and the trees and 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 take note of the dragonflies and the flowers and the birds and all that and just really take it in so it's like trying to really appreciate each and every moment and um and then as we get to open our doors to our clients, you know, it's just, you know, being able to, you know, work with them, understanding what their uh, issues are and and really trying to help them get to the root cause and provide them with a a realistic plan that will, you know, change their life, literally. I mean, I've had, um, that's why, you know, I became more than just myself. I used to be just a single, uh, you know, natural healer. Mm -hmm. And, I kept hearing from all my clients, you know, I mean, they were so ecstatic, like, oh my gosh, you know, I had suffered 30 years for with insomnia or depression or anxiety or whatever it was, didn't matter. And then they got so excited that within days and weeks, uh, and definitely under 30 days, they were resolved of that. They helped their, their brain and body healed itself through our healing modalities. But one thing that resonated with me is that they think for a second and they're like, well, why did I have to suffer for 10 years before I found you? You know, like, why is that? And I said, you know, first of all, you know, one person. And and second of all, it made me think like, okay, how can I reach more people? Well, one is we became a nonprofit so that we could help, you know, people, um, you know, get help when they couldn't afford it or didn't have insurance. And then the other way is where, you know, I realized, you know what, um, I can share this information with people, as many people as we can, and we can share what we do with other people and, and how, um, we can, um, you know, uh, deliver this message as well as, um, you know, replicate some of the healing modalities and that's, and you know, I get excited too, because a lot of people have lost their jobs, right? And they no longer have work. Well, um, how amazing would it be, you know, for them to be able to maybe if they're passionate about helping others or healing others, um, you know, to learn some of the modalities themselves and to be able to um, go out on, uh, you know, in the world and, and, and take it forward, right? So there's, lots of excitement and opportunity here yeah that excites the heck out of me i (laughs) i've got such a long list of things i would love to do and you've just added one to them (laughs) i um i you know i was thinking about when you were talking about different ways to meditate and it's funny i was talking to one of my dearest friends last night i'm lucky because you know i've got four children and my husband and my kids are all you know that everybody cooks so i'm not in the kitchen every night but i noticed that if i'm not in the kitchen chopping veggies every two or three days i really miss it it's like my meditative thing and i you know like i'm a color person i love color so you know when i chop up the veggies which happens in this house every night there's you know this beautiful rainbow of colors and it becomes like you know to me it's almost like a painting <laughs> i agree with you 100 percent, and yeah. that is absolutely another one of the things that i'm super passionate about is mm-hmm. um you know food you know food is what brings people together yeah. you know it's, it's the center of everything it's you know it's life right and um again i love that i i do the same thing you know it's just i my favorite meal of the day is you know dinner time yeah. you know the evening when i can truly take the time, prepare it, 
and and just enjoy it um yeah i love it and i love it <laughs> me too me too and this girlfriend that i was talking to last night her children have left home and she's separated so she spends a lot of time by herself and when they first left she was like oh you know this it feels like there was a, a freeing i don't have to do all this stuff but yeah. it took a very small amount of time and suddenly she was like oh but i actually want to <laughs> right yeah you start to make it yeah, yeah. yeah. And she can cook for friends and, and yeah, cook for does. herself and yeah, yeah exactly. she does. but we you know it's it's interesting you know our thoughts and where we can get caught up in the idea of this have to thing but it's not have to we we, no. we choose to and we can bring so much joy through those simple simple activities yeah yeah. So you you touched on you know the fact that there is a lot of job loss and a lot of fear around money and and you know that energy is happening across the globe right now, but you know the other side of energy is manifesting and how we can you know it's not just in our bodies but how we can bring things into our lives. So this is also one of my favourite topics. So I would love to dive in there if you're if you're okay with that. So how do you um, First of all, maybe if you want to explain for those that don't know what manifesting is, um, so we can start there. And how have you used it in your life? Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. I actually um, started manifesting or using energy or um, to manifest even as a young child. I didn't even know what I was doing at the time um, until much later in my life. And um, I was even meditating at a young age that I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know it was what, that, what I was doing was meditation and manif manifestation. I, um, you know, I would I remember I grew up on a farm and I would literally, my dad wouldn't be able to farm for months. And then all of a sudden, you know, my dad would bring me out and I would, you know, literally visualize and send energy to his tractor and all of a sudden his tractor would, you know, turn on and, you know, and it literally, I remember in my younger years, I just would start to play with that more and more, you know, have, um, you know, just, you know, be totally connected, uh, not having ego, but just like, you know, totally feeling, um, you know, source energy, divine source energy, and absolutely, you know, be becoming one with that and connecting with that. And then following that up with, you know, visualizing, you know, um, visualizing the what you want or what you see happening, what you want it to happen, but also feeling it, you know, you, that has to be, that's an essential part um, to, you know, kind of get, get so much into that happening that you feel it it's it's that it's already happened right so you know if i wanted you know to become class president or i wanted to be a cheerleader or i wanted you know to date this guy right i mean you know as a young i was constantly um manifesting and um i did it with quite great ease a lot of a lot of classmates would say celine why is it that you get everything you want and i would kind of say well this is what i do right you know i'm doing this thing well then later in life you know um i learned you know a little bit more what the term is what i was actually doing and i i started to study energy um a lot more seriously and the the greatest way to work with energy is through energy and so when i relate that back to health as an example you know if someone has um cancer or you know um lack of oxygen in their heart or whatever it may be that they're dealing with um to truly um uh, you know visualize uh you know those cells um getting better and feeling them get better and 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 doing this um process uh, mm -hmm you know, on a regular consistent basis. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, there has been lots and lots of testimonials and stories of people overcoming um, health issues and, and that sort of thing, um, just through their positive thinking, their, their, their energetic field of vibration is, and manifesting it. And it's, again, 
through you know a combination of visualizing and if it's affirmations can help people you know thinking is one thing but vocalizing is another so even how we speak is really really important so you know if i had um uh let's say i had something you know health issue um and maybe i made it aware to someone that i have a health issue i would you know someone's like well how are you doing you know i would not speak back to them in the way that i have that i would say my you know my health is continually improving and you know like everything we say is very important um you know hope uh you know change things to a an affirmative even if um they haven't so it's okay in my book to already go there because your body will catch up you know what i mean and um and it always does you know we we put what we think about we bring about so we want to make sure even in this time you know we want to stay away from um worry and fear that we get from social media and the news mm -hmm. we want to if you want to really help uh, the world um you know there's a lot we can't change you know we can't change you know all the politics and and all this stuff I mean, we can make little changes yeah. um but what i feel that we can really do is manifest a peaceful and loving world mm -hmm. and bring love and light to the areas uh, of you know you know even when we had the whole black lives matter and all that mm -hmm. sending love and light you know just literally in a meditative calm connected space sending so much love and light to that is truly one way i personally can influence and if we do that as a collective um it will increase the potential of things you know manifesting this world into you know a loving and peaceful world where we all share in you know our thoughts are things <laughs> it's something yeah. that is just it's just life-changing to understand yeah. that and you know the power of our language is something that i i love talking about because it's yeah. once again it's life-changing to talk about i get to make dinner for my family rather than i have to or right you know. yes yes absolutely and even the little things we might joke a little bit like oh i'm I'm losing my memory or I'm losing my mind, you know, like, ha ha ha, I, I'm losing my mind or, oh, I'm dumb or whatever. I mean, no, stop yourself from saying, you know, just we really have to monitor what we say and how we say it. Yeah. Thinking it has power. Yeah. Our words speaking it have more power yeah. and actions have even more power. So keeping um, that awareness yeah. of, wow, we have power in our thoughts, our power in our word and um, even more power in in our uh, actions but as a collective you know the change can happen positively one of my favorite um i think quotes from mother teresa uh, she's one of my idols <laughs> uh, she someone said uh, they were upset that she wasn't um fighting for war and she said i'm how did she say it i'm I'm, I'm fighting for peace or something like that. So, you know, it's a whole nother like perspective or mentality that no, I'm, I'm not here for a war. I'm here for peace. And, um, you know, so it's, it's absolutely true that it makes a difference. Yeah, what we focus on expands. That's yeah. you know, like I think it was Oprah that started that, or Tony Robbins. Anyway, <laughs> it's it, you know the, these great minds that are doing extraordinary things in the world. There's you know these running threads um, that you know, they share. Mm. Yeah, uh, I want to mention too. Um, you know, you, you know, our audience, for example, you know, got to think about like, well, how much time are you spending looking at social media, the news, the radio? Do you know, I haven't watched the news, uh, read a newspaper, or listened to news radio in probably 30 years. Now, that might sound ridiculous to a lot of people, but guess what? I always hear what's newsworthy. You always hear it. And then no one's ever accused me of being out of the know. You know what you really need to know. But think about in an eight hour day, how much time are you 
bringing that energy, that negative energy into your, your body, your field. Yeah. And a lot of times even, you know, because of the collective fear and stress, anxiety, worry, depression, you know, we are like radio channels. We, we sense each other, we feel each other. And sometimes, you know, let's say we're living in a condominium, maybe we're picking up, we feel, wow, that's weird. I feel all of a sudden depressed or anxiety. Well, you may be picking up the energetic vibration of the people around you. It might not, not even be yours, right? So we have to be aware of, we're all like little radio channels and, and, you know, we're feeling each other's fields of energy and we don't need to take more of it on voluntarily by spending hours uh, listening to radio and news and social media where you, you know, if you're on social media and, and you're watching the funny jokes and stuff like that, and it makes you laugh. Yes. You know, do things that elevate your energy, uh, make lift you and make you happier. And that's going to make you healthier, you yeah. know, doing those kinds of things. If it's um, lowering your energy, um, then it's, it's, it's going to, be affecting your immune system and your health and counter you know productive to avoiding you know the pandemic and the things that are going on so yeah, yeah. absolutely i you know i'd second that there's similarly there's no way i don't watch the news i don't pick up newspapers i don't tune into any of that i don't listen to it in the car so and i never seem to miss the important things that right. i need to know but i'm i take it a step further even um my son was talking to me about the explosions that have been happening and um, it was like, just don't, just don't give me the details. You know, I don't, I don't want it. I, I can't, you know, it doesn't serve me or anybody else for me to have the details because I absorb it and it just, just, I find it so, and you know, I understand, you know, from what we're talking about, it's, you know, it's just lowering, lowering my vibration and I have a very deliberate, um, intention of wanting to be a source of calm hope possibility love and when you know when i receive all this information that's really lowering my vibration then i can't be a source for that in the world right. so it's yeah. a deliberate practice yeah it, it absolutely is and yeah. it's uh, you know it's a personal choice and yeah. i think it's it's uh when you know as we're sharing here you know, a lot of people um, aren't aware of that, but I think, you know, we're educating, we can educate on how to live a life where we're not feeling like we're forced to, you know, take that on just because someone's, you know, sharing, wanting to share a story or, you know, we don't have to, we, we have the ability to, um, pick and choose mm -hmm. our environment and, you know, you know, the things that were around, the energy that were around. And, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a, a more in our control than we, I think we give ourselves the yeah. realization for. I remember watching in a healing documentary about somebody that healed her cancer through laughter. And at the time thinking, goodness gracious, how on earth does that work? But now we, you know, like all these pieces come together. We understand now how she was raising her vibration, her energy yeah. field magic i want the women tuning into this to feel really clear about who comes to you for support so if you can just we've obviously touched on a lot but i just want it to really be very clear who comes to you for support and the women that are listening um you know what are some of the typically you know do people come to you when they're feeling well or is it you know what are yeah, I'm just trying to get a picture so that the women tuning into this are very clear about, who, you know, why they would reach out to you. Right. Well, um, obviously, we get a lot of people who come to us uh, who've suffered a very long time and tried everything, and they've been dealing with things for a very long time, and maybe surgery and medication is no longer an option for them, and, you know, have they been adding to their suffering because of the side effects of medication or maybe even the surgeries they've had. Um, so they, that's, you know, even people who don't know what's going on and they're frustrated and, you know, it's a mystery and no one can figure it out. Uh, that's, that's a lot of times we get that, but however, what's amazing with um, the scanner I was describing earlier with you is we have an opportunity to um, look at preventative medicine, so to speak, 
I mean, we are becoming in an age of, you know, the anti-aging, right? There's lots of hype about anti-aging and stem cell therapy and all these things. And again, you know, without medication in a non-invasive way, uh, we now have uh, the ability to share with people how we can uh, see um, where in their body they might be, um, uh, you know, weakened by something or how we can prevent something from happening in the near future. And just as an example, um, I did the scan on myself and I'm like, it's going to be very interesting because, you know, there's, you know, I don't really, I'm not aware of anything that it could be wrong with me. However, um, you know, osteoporosis showed up a little like a bone degeneration in my shoulder and lower back area. And I thought, wow, isn't that interesting that I, I, I'm catching this early so that it doesn't um, continue uh, to get worse. And lo and behold, you know, on the scanner, it showed that, you know, coffee for me uh, was a detriment to my bones. It was pulling the potassium out. So I was able to look at kind of like the root cause. And then what I did was I used um, frequencies. I set it on bone regeneration to help the, that energetic frequency to regenerate my bones. And now osteoporosis doesn't even show up in my body. So it's fun to get people on track. And I think um, we need to look at don't look at things like, oh my gosh, I'm afraid to see what could be wrong with me. No, it's knowledge is power, right? So empower yourself regardless of you have something you're dealing with or something you, you don't even know that you're not dealing with. Empower yourself by being in the know and then you know taking action to making it right because you know we are living longer you know, we have the means to um, take action and reverse aging um, and reverse, you know, issues that people have had uh, for a long time. And, and that's um, exciting yeah. to help people be empowered, to not wait till they get surprised that they have a, you know, a, a brain tumor or, a, you know, a, you know, a, a, a stroke or whatever it may be. We can, we can, do, have, do so many things to prevent uh, those things from happening by, you know, early warning and, and making some action. Yeah. I love to um, talk to people about, you know, the information's neutral, what we get to, you know, the meaning we apply to it is up to us and how we, you know, look at it. And it's just empowering. We get to yeah. shift things before they, they go too far. So I've got two final questions. I know we're going a little bit over, but this conversation has been so beautiful. I love to ask, you know, this is unleashing the audacious woman within. So I would love to ask you, what is the most audacious thing you've done in your life? Bold, daring, without restriction to prior ideas. There's probably been many, but is there one thing that just comes in? Well, my mom always taught me make lemons out, I mean, lemonade out of lemons, right? And so when I was 18, um, I had um, a, an examination. And then fast forward four years, I had a letter in the mail that said, you have stage four cancer. And I was absolutely frightened. And that letter said, don't even worry about making an appointment, just come in. And I went in and, you know, either at some period of time that I just, you know, had to heal myself from that time that that was uh, uh, diagnosed or uncovered, or maybe it was a medical recording area. I didn't know, but um, I then went to full on to, um, you know, just developing a program at the time to make sure women uh, don't have abnormal test results uh, without follow-up. You know, sometimes we always hear it as females, like, oh, if you, no news is good news if you don't hear from us. But, you know, what I really take away from that is, you know, all throughout my life, whenever we're met with a challenge, you know, or an obstacle, you know, we, we look at, oh my gosh, this happened or that happened. Um, there's always a silver lining, as they say, or a golden opportunity to turn it around. If you just stare at that dark cloud long enough, all of a sudden you'll see the rainbow on the other side. So there's, you know, I would just maybe even say 
on a broad spectrum throughout my life, I, as I'm sure everyone here watching this has had traumatic moments, have had trials and tribulations, have had undeniable stress, etc. But try to take each and every one of these as our a challenge as our life lesson as part of our journey to grow and learn and expand and there if you just sit quiet and long enough and search for that and know that it's there for you there's an opportunity there there's something there's a morsel in there for you to uncover and discover if you're looking at it in that light you'll find it and before you know it that thing that you thought was this devastating traumatic horrific event is now all of a sudden the golden hour for you and that is you know just one of the ways that i feel in my life i've been audacious <laughs> love it it's such a, it's such a fun word <laughs> I do. I love it. I love it. Even just saying it audacious. It's like you mm -hmm. can't just say it normally. Right. Yes, exactly. This enunciation. Yeah. So I know you have a beautiful gift for our audience. Could you take a minute to tell them what that is? Absolutely. Um, well, if we are offering um, our uh, scanning um we, I remember I told you earlier about the uh, scanner that we have that can scan your brain and body. So people can um, have a high level read, uh, an introductory, introductory scan uh, at no cost to you. Wow. And um, it's, it's very high level. So we would just, you know, do a, a small part so you could kind of, you get to see what it's like. Um, and uh, you can simply mail your nail clippings, uh, toenails or fingernail clippings along with the picture. And um, you can mail it to us and we would have you fill out a little pre-evaluation just so we have the information we need in order to do the scan. And that pre-evaluation is actually a link on our website. If you go to onsole.com, the lower right hand corner is a link to a pre-evaluation and they can fill that out and mail their nails to our California headquarters. And we really want people to kind of start to take on uh, the, you know, the new mindset as to, okay, I want to be empowered, you know, um, you know, how's my heart? How's my left foot? You know, just maybe get introduced, get a taste of, some of these incredible natural healing modalities that are so incredibly powerful and uh, you know, empower yourself. So that's kind of what we want to do and, and give them that, that little exposure to um, what we do and, and how they can um, be in a, in a healthy, powerful place. That's absolutely beautiful. I'll be doing it. <laughs> awesome. I'm, I'm so intrigued. This has been an absolutely delightful conversation and you are such a source of hope and possibility and health. And yeah, it's just, it's been beautiful. And I'm so grateful for your time, Celine. Thank you. I'm so grateful for yours. Thank you so much, Edwina. Thank Have you. a great evening or day. <laughs> yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Anything, any subject that has the ability to put the power firmly back in your hands is always going to be a favorite subject for me. So what can you take away from this interview and start implementing in your life right now to take back control of your health and happiness? The thing that I would love to suggest is being mindful of upping your vibe. So just start to notice what makes you feel more alive, what makes you feel more vital, what makes you feel happier, what brings you joy. So as Celine so beautifully pinpointed, there are lots and lots of things that we can look at. What is going to be powerful is for you to start no noticing what works for you. Colour works for me. Being in nature works for me. Um, feeding my body lots of fresh organic vegetables. Yes, I eat other things, but that's something that just, you know, feeds my vibration.
uh, looking at the vegetables even works for me. Fresh flowers work for me. Things that bring me joy is obviously time with family, time outdoors, a beautiful garden, connecting with friends, having a laugh with friends. You know, I've got a couple of girlfriends that we started something during lockdown. Um, it was like a Friday night happy hour. We could jump on a Zoom call and we always laugh. We always laugh. Our kids get irritated because we just seem to giggle at everything and not really irritated, but it's what they, you know, oh my gosh, here they go again, that kind of conversation. So what is it? What brings you joy? What ups your vibration? Music, dancing, whatever it is. Start to really notice. Write them down and then do more of that. All right, that's it from me today. So much love and bye for now. Bye.